I'm Scott Allen Miller. It's the 12th of December, 2022, and this is my vlog of daily life in Leon, Nicaragua. Today is Monday. We are back to work. We have lots of things we got to do, but it is our first day working from the new house in Sutiava, and it is just awesome to have a comfortable new workspace uh, and place to do everything. I'm so happy. We're only on our second full day being in the new house, but one of the things that really stands out is just how comfortable we are here. Everything is more comfortable. There's more space, so we're not all constrained. One of the things that has driven me crazy for the last two years is that we've really not had enough space for the stuff that we do. So every time we're doing something, it's like we're bumping into things, we're trying to skirt around things. It makes it makes just everything hard. And now with the new house, we have big space. It's My bedroom has so much more room to walk around the bed. Nothing's up against the wall or near the wall. I mean, the, the head of the bed is. It's not ridiculously large, but the, there's lots of space on the other three sides. The bathroom has plenty of space to move around. You're not bumping into things every time you, you move. You have enough room to set things down, to, you know, to take out a towel and dry yourself. You're not pressed up against the wall or something as you try to dry and uh, not that the last house was that tiny but there just wasn't a lot of extra space and the office was so small that I was always up against the wall I could barely turn my chair around I couldn't move around at all now my office is spacious and I have plenty of room to do whatever I need and the kitchen is big there's a big dining room we haven't had a dining room uh, we have big living rooms with lots of open space to walk around the outside veranda is huge and uh, it's just everything we do now we can spread out it's easy to organize things it's easy to keep things clean it's easy to see where they are it's easy to move around without running into people i'm not in every time i move having to ask someone to move out of a doorway i'm not worried about tripping over a dog running past me every few seconds little things like that it's amazing there's just enough space and everything is so nice we've moved up quite significantly and just all the little things are comfortable the showers are big and spacious and there's good water pressure and it's hot water hot water we had suicide showers but it's suicide showers everywhere and they're nice they work it's comfortable um the whole thing it's it's really really nice so today we're starting uh our our like first time we're doing a work week from here and uh so that's going to be interesting to see what it's actually like doing work uh during the week um and, and what normal life is going to be like but we don't get very much time today and tomorrow are our last uh days here and then uh dominica and i and the kids are heading for texas and new york uh, so we're going to be away for a few weeks um today though early this morning we got up we got coffee we were sitting out um and uh, uh pretty early this morning uh, Yao came to join us because she's moving into the house. She is our chef. Uh, so she came pretty early in the morning to move into the house so that she could uh, start getting ready, figuring out the kitchen and the pantry and her living situation and all that stuff. Uh, so we had her join us today. And today was the first day of Paula, uh, who is our housekeeper, um, being here as she helped us with the move, but now she's here as our housekeeper. And so we're kind of, we're starting to get into the groove. We still have a lot of stuff to put away, but we got most of that done because we really don't have that much stuff. So the last couple days we moved pretty quickly and uh, cooked in the house for the first time this morning. And Yao did. She made eggs and cheese. Uh, we have very few ingredients, so they've got to do a grocery run later today to get the house stocked up. And uh, I'm wondering where my little dog went while I'm out here talking. Uh, he does like to disappear. That's a bit of a problem. I've got the big one. And yeah, so that is the start of our day. We're going to be back with more stuff later, but I wanted to kind of just get the ball rolling on all the videos because I got to get these uploaded so that Liesl can start editing now that she's doing video editing for me, which is the coolest thing ever. It is so much more fun doing the channel now that it's something that Liesl and I do together rather than something I do all by myself. All right, so this afternoon uh, we spent um, a bit of time working with Liesl and she got uh, a lot of videos going. So traditionally I do one to two videos a day because I'm pretty busy and that's about the most that I can handle. Now Liesl was able to do about five in one day and we went from being dramatically behind to fully caught up all in a single day. This is this is like the best thing ever. It's so cool that we're able to do this together and, and it's uh, making a huge difference for me for productivity. So I'm really hoping that that's gonna allow us to catch up on a bunch of other stuff as well. And right now she's only editing this channel, but in a few days I'm hoping to start working with her on um, at very least my Sam IT channel, uh, which is actually easier than this one. It's very basic, just like, clip the things put in the the standard intro and it's done 
and uh and that's about all there is to it so this evening mostly we were in the house mostly just uh hanging out there wasn't a ton going on we did run out of water today uh and it turns out because we live outside the city center now there's only water delivery on wednesdays so we asked for water on saturday didn't hear anything didn't hear anything finally got a hold of them today and they're like yeah there's no truck until wednesday and we're like uh what we've been out of water for a day already so marcella brought some water from the beach uh, to get us through and then on Wednesday some will arrive but we will be gone on Wednesday we leave Wednesday in uh, five o'clock in the morning uh, so because uh, today is Monday uh, so that's Wednesday the 14th um, so something interesting when I come down here I'm going to turn the camera around this is cool when I come down here to film uh, when I don't have the dogs with me so this line of palm trees here this is very uh, traditional for near the beach and it has this dense foliage that goes from tree to tree up there. Now, now that I've been here for a few minutes and, are, and I'm talking, uh, you won't hear them, but uh, both there and this back wall over here, uh, full of iguanas when I sneak back here and they all go running and scampering away when I arrive. Um, but it's really cool. And for those who don't know, when you live in the tropics, you really want to have iguanas. Iguanas are an incredible, pro to anywhere that you are because first of all they're not they're not aggressive um they're not dangerous it's not like a gila monster or something like that um they can you know you don't want to corner one and like mess with it they'll nip you but they're 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 not that big um they're about the size of a cat and um it, the big ones are little ones get pretty small um, but they're really important for cleaning up the ecosystem they eat a lot of bugs uh they keep away other things that are less clean um i'm not I'm not a person who's like scared of or worried about like mice or rats, um, but those are more likely to bite you. That's not really an issue. They're more, way more likely to damage your stuff though. Mice and rats will damage everything you own, right? They'll, they'll nibble on your, your stored items. They'll, they'll ruin, um, I can hear lizards over behind me now. Um, uh, they'll, they'll eat cords, um, they'll, they'll poop places, their poop is very dangerous, it can carry disease. The biggest issue with mice and rats is that they carry diseases that transfer to humans. So that kind of stuff you worry about a bit, but lizards don't really have those problems. They might be something, but it's very, very minor. Um, so they're, they're very safe to have around in a lot of ways. They like to sleep on your roof, they make lots of noise at night, um, but in general, they keep away a lot of things that are less healthy or dangerous. And so um, you really do want to have them. They're, they're a great, finding that you have tons of them um, is a very, very positive thing. So it's really cool that I come down here and all the trees rustle. And as I walk down this wall over here, I saw a good size one just run up the wall because um, they get nervous, they're very skittish. Uh, and I did notice some much much smaller lizards in the piles of, of old leaves and stuff um, as I went around. So that was just cool. This is the most that I've walked down and, and been near a house and had like like trees rustling. Like you could hear them all over running around in the, in the foliage. When we lived in Laborio that we just moved out of, um, we had them living in the roof and they would make all kinds of noise at night and sometimes they would pee on us. They never managed to pee on us, but it would like suddenly drip out of the ceiling and it's really disgusting because it filters through this. Like it's not just pee, it's pee that goes through the ceiling. So it's all kinds of dust and you know, whatever is in the ceiling and it comes down, it's like blah. Oh, there's a big one right next to me. I saw him, saw him just a little bit. He ran for a while and then I saw him jump over the foliage. So he was way too close and decided that he needed to make a break for it. I'm guessing that there are scores of them. From the amount that I've heard, I'm guessing there must be 20 to 40 uh, iguanas just in this little area. Oh, and a humming, there's no way I'm going to get it on the GoPro, but a hummingbird is in the tree right next to me right now. It is, it's very wild out here. It is really neat uh, to be able to come out and, and have such a, uh, open area uh so close to the house this is this is perfect it's so quiet and serene i'm really loving this and i get to talk to you guys without yelling i don't have to do the voice for those who haven't noticed for the last few days i have not been recording with voice reduction um or or i'm sorry voice isolation from final cut pro and then you do get a little bit of the background noise you'll hear like sirens and stuff now and then but in general you get this much better audio because i'm able to record at a lower volume so it's not clipping and um and and we don't have to digitally modify it because there's really no background noise it's actually really really quiet um and so even so normally when we're editing the videos lisa and i will turn on voice voice isolation which 
on average tends to drop the total audio by about three decibels. And then we pull down the audio by an additional three decibels just because my voice is loud, my microphone is close, and otherwise it would be pretty booming for you guys. And um, now, since we've been recording here, we're skipping the voice isolation and only pulling down the three decibels. So it's about half the amount that we have to do a reduction overall, and we don't have to cut out the background noise. So the rustling of the trees, the little bit of background sounds that exist um, should still be there in a more natural way. They're not being artificially trimmed out. Uh, so this evening, um, uh, Yao made uh, some dinner. She made pasta for everybody while she was at the house, uh, but she's not staying. She's going to be moving in and living at the house very soon, um, but she doesn't have all of her stuff yet. She hasn't, today was like her checking out the kitchen and seeing what was going on. And she and Paolo went and did grocery shopping this afternoon. So it's the first grocery run for the house, although we don't need very much because most of us are not gonna be here uh, for a while. So we're, we're getting things done. The big thing that I did this evening um, and I'll talk more about this later when it arrives, but I've been needing to get a laptop and today I ordered that. Uh, and for those who are wondering, because we're doing the video editing and because I have some travel stuff going on and because I'm, the plan is to go to New York without having anything. I'm going basically with nothing but a phone um, and heading north. I'm not taking the GoPro, I'm not taking anything. Uh, I have the GoPro 11 waiting for me up there, so I'm hoping to be able to do videos for you guys using that, but if not, I can use my iPhone, and um, I am taking no computer, so I have no way to edit, no way to save, no way to do anything. I'm heading up, and I just ordered a MacBook Air M2, 16 gigs of RAM, and a one terabyte hard drive. My current M1 Mac Mini, my desktop, has a quarter terabyte of drive, and I really notice how light it is. I have to have an external drive plugged in all the time. I constantly have to do management to move files on and off because I fill it so fast. I can, I can barely just work on anything on it. I can't store anything on it because of how tight it is. Um, my plan was to get a cheaper MacBook Air, uh, but when I went to order it, they were not available until December 28th, which is basically two days before we return. It was cutting it way too close, and I would have two weeks in New York with no laptop at all. That's a problem. So I would have to take one north with me, and then it'd be problems bringing them back. Just one way or another, it was not gonna work well. So um, I looked, and you know, you could expedite. There's some things you could do, but basically it was all very risky. But if I changed from the half terabyte base hard drive to the one terabyte hard drive option, which is $200 more, which is ridiculous, um, then suddenly it went from being available on December 28th to ship today. And so we talked about it, and it's already such an expensive laptop, and we need to make sure it arrives. And honestly, with all the video editing and stuff that I do, having, because first of all, the, the hard drive that's inside the laptop is screaming fast. It's a really high-end NVMe, and anything I plug in on the outside is just an SSD over USB, which is still fast, but the NVMe is way faster. And uh, so if I can do more and work from that NVMe most of the time, that does make my workflow much, much faster. And the M2 chip over my M1 chip is about a 20% boost in performance overall and like a 30% boost in memory performance. So uh, it's, it's like this is going to be a lot faster. Um, and, and I'm gonna wanna do a lot of work on it and I'm gonna use that internal drive. And for $200, I could spend that somehow trying to expedite or trying to work around or whatever, or just get the bigger hard drive and have it shipped the same day. So we looked at the budget and said, yeah, that just, it ends up making sense. So I got the most expensive computer I've ever owned in my life um, for by, by a long shot. I'm always so conservative when buying for myself, but now that I'm doing this show for you guys um, and turning this out every day, there's, there's two factors. One is that the show is now generating money. Not very much, but every time you guys buy me a coffee or just watch the show or look at any ads, that stuff really helps out. Um, and, and if you want to help out and you don't want to buy me a coffee or can't, then you, what you can do is go watch an extra episode right? Let it run in the background. Um, play it on another device, right? You've got a TV on the background? Put my show on. Put an episode on you haven't seen in a long time. Watch some old ones, right? Just letting them play somewhere, especially if you see the ads and click on them, but even if you don't, just letting them play somewhere does a ton to promote the show. So that would be much appreciated. It's an easy way that anybody can help support the channel, um, even, if you, if you, even if you can't donate any money. Not that I'm asking you to donate money, but you know, if you want to buy me a coffee, go right ahead. Um, that does help but so so the laptop will in theory pay for itself over a course of years so that's great so that 
part of it is like, okay, if this makes the show possible, it makes sense to have it. But also I do so much work for the show that anything that makes it faster and easier actually does quite a bit to free up my time and make it better for me to get work done and be able to do other work that, that pays the bills bills. Uh, Cause I do work very long hours um, every day. And so if, if this makes it easier for Liesl and I to work, for me to offload work to her by having two Macs, that does a lot. Um, we're gonna get compressor and be able to do rendering across both machines. I'm gonna be able to use all the monitors together. This is gonna give me 4K screen because right now I edit on a 1K. Um, there's, there's just so many things that if this makes me faster, that pays for a lot. So this is the first time I've ever bought a machine like this in any way whatsoever. My other Mac is a mini, which is like, it's like a $600 base and my upgraded really screaming fast model is only 900. So while that was a splurge by far, uh, this is so much more of a splurge, but it's really tiny. It's a 13 inch air. Um, and my plan is to be able to travel with this. It is far less than half the size of my current laptop, which is not designed for travel. Um, and a giant iguana just leapt from the ground into the tree and I can watch it going through the tree. I wish that the GoPro could get it. Like it's so, I'm just seeing it behind all the foliage. So there's no way I'd be able to show it to you, but that was a very, very large iguana. And he just jumped, <laughs> it was pretty cool. Um, and now he's way over, he's going a couple trees over, he's on his way out. I love getting to watch the iguanas. It's so much something that we don't have in New York where I'm from, or even in Texas, in Dallas, like there just are no iguanas. In Texas, we always liked having the geckos and the annals on the windows and stuff. And we thought that was really cool. But having real full-size iguanas just everywhere is really cool. All right, so I got that ordered. It actually shipped tonight. It is supposed to be at my dad's house on the 14th, uh, which is Wednesday. We will be in Costa Rica. So he's supposed to take um, a receipt of it while we're in Costa Rica. So by the time we get on the air, the airplane on Thursday morning to fly to Texas, I should already be aware that it is at my dad's and all set and I don't have to worry about it at all. And then on Friday when I arrive, I will have a laptop, should be able to set it up in a few minutes and immediately get the latest videos uploaded that we take during our travel days so that uh, you guys are able to get, the, we're, we're not late getting episodes out to you. Liesl and I are working really hard today uh, to get the videos out and she did five today. So we are completely caught up. And then tomorrow we're going to do today's video and tomorrow's video, that is the plan. Um, so we're gonna send out the one on the 13th just a little bit before actually finishing the 13th and we may actually do the video for the 14th just because that way it's done and we're just going to talk about what we are going to do rather than what's going on which is not ideal but I do the shorts so if something goes wrong you can watch the shorts and see where we actually are on that we'll see if we manage to get to that but if she's able to pump out three videos in a day that will be fantastic and then we'll have all that comfort of having those days uploaded um, because with travel days it gets really hard and that's I hope to do a bunch of really serious travel coming up this year, not just this trip, but uh, closer to April. And at that point, having a laptop that allows me to really travel lightly, really do fast, efficient work on the road is absolutely critical. So that's a lot of the decision in, in getting this laptop. Plus, and I'm sure I've mentioned this, my old laptop, which is not very old, it's fantastic. Uh, Luchana needs a new laptop and it is perfect for her because she needs something with a discrete graphics card because she needs it for programming and video game design. And uh, so my Acer is, is fantastic for that. It basically matches Liesl's Asus. Uh, so they will have roughly matching laptops and they do a bunch of the same stuff. All right, I'm going to save the video because uh, you know how this GoPro 9 is still crashing on me, but not quite as much, but we've had some significant problems in the last couple days. Today, for the first time, we had an issue where it could not upload one of the videos. That is a new problem we've never had before. I had to pull the data off of the card and manually upload it, which, which was not fun. Um, mostly not fun from a worry standpoint. And also it took hours and hours and hours of the day trying to figure out what was going wrong. Um, and we have uh, a regular issue if the batteries run down, they stop working. So we're trying to fix that um, to some degree as well. Uh, so we're gonna save the video and then our topic of the day is gonna be coming up, which is mailboxes and post uh, and mail delivery here in Nicaragua. We're gonna talk all about that because people have a number of questions about that. But first, if you like to support the show, remember to like and subscribe, that's huge. Go watch an extra video, like I said, that really, really helps. Even if you've seen every one of my videos, just randomly pick an old one and give it another view. You don't have to pay attention. Go in the other room and do stuff, just leave it. Give that extra little bit running 
that does a ton. If a lot of you did that, wow, it would be so noticeable because uh, that gets up the views and it's also the runtime. The amount of time that the videos play, that's one of the things that YouTube looks at very strongly. They want to know that you're actually watching the full episodes. And uh, if you'd like to buy me a coffee, of course, I'm going to put up that link. That comes directly to me. It makes a huge difference, helps us to be able to afford all the things that are required to make this channel, like the MacBook and the Final Cut Pro software and the Motion VFX uh, effects that do all the things you see on the screen and um, having a second computer so that Lisa can help me and having the GoPro and all that stuff. That stuff adds up, and, and you guys really do so much to offset that cost. Thank you so much. Uh, and, of course, share on social media. Tell your friends about the show. Let people know that there's this interesting, quirky vlog every day at, at uh, 7 o'clock Central in the morning. It's a great way to start the day uh, with your coffee and breakfast. And uh, we'll be right back with mail in Nicaragua. All right, so I've had this question come up a number of times, but it came up again this week, and I decided it, it needs a video. Actually, I've known for a while it needs a video, and I just keep forgetting. So um, we've had videos before where we talked about the lack of, or the lack of use of, traditional addresses as we know them in the U.S. and Western Europe here in Nicaragua. Everything is done by reference rather than with a strict address. And so questions come up because of that. Given that you don't have addresses like in the U.S., how do you do mail delivery? Well. There's actually a lot of components to this question, so we're gonna have to dig into this a little bit. First of all, when I lived in the United States, which was not that long ago, two years ago, mail delivery was already becoming something of a pariah, right? It's very, very, very rare that you actually need something delivered by mail. When you do, it's often a package. You don't want that delivered by mail, you want that delivered by a FedEx or a UPS. So that's the first thing, is that private courier services, even in the US, are heavily supplanting the post system. The idea that you need uh, the USPS to deliver things is rapidly becoming a, why do we have this? If you're under 30, there's a lot of times no idea why you would have mail delivery, and the idea of knowing someone's address is kind of odd, honestly. Um, there's still a lot of tradition of sending um, handwritten letters or birthday cards and that kind of thing. For the most part, that's an Americanism. And it's important to recognize that as a cultural thing that a lot of the world doesn't do. Is It's actually very expensive to have a service like that. Those are very, um, I don't want to say frivolous, but I kind of do, right? It's a, it, it's very meaningful to send a card uh, because it's, you know, someone touched this, someone picked it out, someone sent it, but it costs a lot of money and it uses a lot of resources all to just to have something that then someone has to hold on to and say, here's a piece of paper that someone touched and now I'm holding on to it. Um, and it creates a lot of cost and waste and expense. And it's one of those very American and European consumerist things. It's another thing to buy. And companies like Hallmark have done a great job of promoting the need to spend all this money on holidays and, and birthdays and stuff and, and sending these things. Um, and because of that, it's kind of like diamond rings, right? De Beers made something that was inherently not very valuable seem really important and make us feel like we can't question it as a culture, but really it's just consumerism. It's a private company trying to convince us to spend money on them rather than on the person that, um, that we're, we're thinking of. So I can go on and on about the negatives of that aspect of consumerism and how these private companies have driven really bad cultural changes. But in general, it's important to understand the idea of wanting to send a letter to someone, to send a card to someone, that doesn't exist. No one wants to send them, no one wants to receive them. There isn't that cultural value attached to it. So they have no idea why you would want to do that. That's the first thing. Um, beyond that, in the United States, we get things like bills in the mail. Well. That's inappropriate. That should be electronic for sure. Um, mail is inherently expensive, insecure, unreliable. You don't know that something was sent, so you don't know when it's supposed to be received. When living in Texas, we at one point had so little of our mail would make it through that my father opened up a case with the FBI about it, right? Um, when we did receive mail, it would take ridiculously long to receive. And if you send something like a bill, it's really tough to be like, well, you have to pay this bill because we sent it two weeks ago. And you're like, yeah, but it takes two weeks for delivery. I don't have this bill to pay. And you try to pay something, they'll be like, what's the code on your bill? And like, I don't have it. They didn't send me one, right? Um, from my personal perspective, if you put something into the post, you intend it not to necessarily make it. That is not an honest attempt at getting something delivered because the reliability is incredibly low and there's no verification steps. Whereas electronic email, email, um, when you send it, your email system talks to their email system and gets confirmation that they've received it. 
it may go into their spam filter, but that's on their end. They have received it. You have sent it, they have accepted it. If they then don't read it because they chose to put it in the spam or whatever, that is on them. But you know that at least the, the communications between you and them was done and completed. You have that verification. You also have security or the option of security and lots of different levels of security. Email is very, very secure unless you intentionally go way out of your way to do something ridiculous to make it insecure. And even then it's, gener it's way more secure than postal mail no matter what. So reliability, rapidness, you can get messages to someone in seconds. There's no reason for it to take an indeterminate amount of days, right? Two days, two weeks, and they'll get it eventually. That's not a good system for anything. So that makes mail delivery for anything like bills, anything official, really a bad idea. Um, if you do need to deliver paper, you need to deliver with a courier by hand, sign for it, like it's your, almost like you're being served. Uh, and then if the goal is anything else like marketing, that should not be happening. That shouldn't be legal. The fact that companies are allowed to pay USPS to intentionally deliver and forcibly deliver garbage to someone. In the electronic world, it's called spam. It is spam. In both cases, it's spam, unsolicited bulk mail, right? The, the term is the same. And it is absolutely unthinkable. It is it is an attack on the person you're sending it to because you're literally taking garbage and forcing them to throw it away. So you're, you're creating a system where they have to pay a municipal disposal for something they did not request and do not want, but you're somehow by paying the USPS able to force them to deliver it. So that's a serious pr problem right there. It is also a generation of unnecessary waste for the sake of generating waste. So it is an ethical concern about the environment. It is an absolute disregard. And the USPS takes a serious responsibility for this. And I, be I personally believe the USPS should be shut down because of their complete and utter lack of ethics. The horrible treatment of their customers, the people that they charge, and the horrible treatment of the public, right? The USPS acts in total disregard for the needs of Americans and um, should be absolutely shut down by the government, let alone, you know, not support it, right? I, I truly think they should just say they're not allowed to operate because of, you know, them being in a position where they can forcibly deliver trash to someone that should not be legal under any circumstances, um, let alone allow them to do so. So I'm very strongly opposed to the concept of mail. And in much of the world like here, it's not that people are opposed to it, it's that they have no idea why you would want it. Um, so that's the starting point. Why do you want mail at all? Probably you want to stop and rethink it, right? Especially when you're going international. If you're like, well, but people are going to want to send me things from the United States to Nicaragua. That's a great thing and people probably will. Tell them not to, right? Just don't. That is a terrible reaction um, and it's very American, right? Mail delivery only makes sense ever within a single country the, or maybe the US and Canada. Um, but the, the cost of sending anything international and the reliability is very low. Um, we have tried shipping things to other countries over the decades because I work internationally and it almost never arrives. And that's the, just the expectation. If you send something by mail to another country, you're not expecting it to arrive. You have to have that mentality. I threw this away at great expense and there's some chance it'll show up, but the expectation shouldn't be that it is. Uh, and that doesn't matter where it's going. Maybe to England, you can expect it to, but that's it, right? I've had people send to Spain. Absolutely, it was a disaster, right? For this exact reason, someone had the mentality, I should be able to just throw something in the mail and forgets that it's another country and that the mail is not a singular system. They're sending between systems. And it ended up costing, we estimated um, for something that we could have bought locally, um, maybe 15 or $20, cost more than $1,000 to get it to the person in Spain from the United States for no reason, none at all, a thousand dollars. And it took weeks, it was a major problem. Um, and, and it was potentially illegal, the stuff that they sent, nothing nothing tragic, just, just it's probably not allowed to be, you know, it's kind of like sending an apple in the mail, you're allowed to do that? No, you're not really allowed to do that. So not that anyone was gonna go to jail, but it could have been confiscated and the whole thing could have been moot. Um, so things like that, if someone wants to send you something, stop them and say, look, I, I'm in another country. Like that's not an appropriate thing. You have email. If you need to get something to me immediately, that's how you do it. If you need to ship me something that is important, then it needs to go through a mechanism like Nika Box, where you maintain a PO box in Miami, you ship to there all using the US internal system. Then a specific international courier takes it between the countries for you and then delivers it here in country. If you need to do that, there are mechanisms to get you things.
but it should not be casual. It should not be this disregard for internationals. I have this other video where I said, to, to be successful living in any country, but especially one as dramatically different as Nicaragua, you have to let go of the Americanisms um, because they will burn you. And, and mail delivery is a great example. Mail delivery is not a thing much outside the United States. There is no reason to want it. It doesn't make sense. But Americans like it and landlines and fax machines because they're a legacy and texting, right? All of those are legacy components that we became emotionally attached to and society became attached to over time. And none of those are common other places. Here in Nicaragua, no one has a fax machine. Why would you do that? You just send an email, send a WhatsApp. You have secure immediate free mechanisms, why would you pay to do something that's slow, insecure, and unreliable? Doesn't make sense, right? So they don't. They, don't, they don't even think about it. Why would you have a landline? No one needs a landline. We don't have copper lines everywhere. We have the internet. We can make digital calls any number of ways securely. Why would we pass all of our calls through a central government agency without encryption? We wouldn't. Um, why would you send a text? Again, completely insecure, passes through the government. It just doesn't make any sense. It's unreliable, it can take a long time. When we have secure digital uh, mechanisms like WhatsApp and Telegram and Signal, we just wouldn't, right? And they don't. No one thinks about those things. No one does those things. I don't know if you can hear them. My dogs are whining in the distance because they want to come play. And um, so mail falls into that category. Modernize, use, use email. Uh, when, when you need to get a message like that right away, use instant messaging. If you want to talk to people, have real world conversations. There's no reason to be disconnected and far away from people back in the United States. You can have video calls, audio calls, text messaging, or rapid instant messaging, emails, all of that perfectly well from here. You'll never know you're outside the US. It'll be just like you're there, but not sitting at, having coffee together. And then um, when you need boxes delivered, you have to think of it as, okay, I got to get it to a Nicaragua courier so that it can be reliably delivered. That's just the thought process that anybody shipping to anywhere international needs to go through. But Nicaragua is extreme in how necessary that is compared to some countries where you might be able to get away not doing that. Now, trust me, I've shipped to South America and if you don't do that, it's all gone, right? This is not in any way unique to Nicaragua. I have never lived in a country where I could get a package from another country, um, nor have I ever known people who want to do that, really. That's, that's a very one, I guess, a, a very, very few. But in general, it's people who are here who are like, oh, I really want to get this thing from Amazon or something and and it's a product they need not someone in another country who wants to send them something um, and so we, we have those mechanisms now that's the first thing just in general eliminate all that shipping things that idea that you're gonna ship things all the time that needs to go away anytime you're gonna live abroad now how do things get to you? Well, we get around the same as anywhere else, right? The fact that we don't use American addresses doesn't change the fact that we have addresses, right? It's just that our addresses are weird. Like at our hotel, which is the Simple Beach Lodge in Las Pinitas, it is, its address is Simple Beach Lodge Contiguo Playa Roca, right? It literally touches Playa Roca. Playa Roca is considered a uh, mail delivery um, landmark. And so there's standard landmarks that everybody uses, and you just have to know what yours is. Uh, our house in Laborio, our landmark is La Iglesia Laborio, and so we are una cuadra y media abajo de la Iglesia uh, Laborio, um, and that would get right to our house. Everyone knew exactly where that was. You could tell a taxi that, you could tell a mail delivery, you could tell Ugo, and they would come straight to your house, no problem. Uh, now, all of that, whether it's a US style address or a Nicaragua style address, will get you a certain degree of to your house, but none of it is super accurate. None of it's super reliable. That's not the best way to handle it. And here in Nicaragua, um, we've broadly moved to the modern way of handling it. Both of those mechanisms, what the US does with 1920 Clover Lane and Nicaragua's Quadri Media, 500 meters north of the island or whatever, both of those are sloppy systems. And it, living in Nicaragua, people will say, it's not really that sloppy, it always gets there. That's not true, it's sloppy. And Americans in the same way will say, it's not sloppy, it always gets there, and that is not true. I lived in America for, for 40 years, and there are many, many, many cases where those addresses do not get you to a house. You end up on that road, the numbers stop, You have to. the road is somewhere else, it's not as simple as it seems. When it works really well, it works really well, but often it does not. And growing up, Yes, we had a street address, but we didn't have to use it. When we did mail delivery when I was a kid in the US, I was just Rural Route 2. All you had to put was Scott, Rural Route 2, and my zip code, and uh, or my town name. You didn't need the zip code. You could say Pavilion, New York, Rural Route 2, Scott, and it would get to me. That was it. That was enough. Um, 
So that was very similar to Nicaragua dresses. Today, it's just that in between, the United States moved very strictly to uh, house numbers and, and all that kind of thing. And that's fine, and it's a pretty good system, um, but it's, it's not perfect. There are situations like my house in Texas that I had recently, which was uh, on Sheridan Drive. Sheridan Drive was not a continuous road. It was in broken bits all throughout the town, and it changed counties and cities at different points along its path. So it was really, really hard to write an address because if you wrote an address and someone got on that road, they would not be able to get to that address. And so that system of streets and numbers didn't work the way it's supposed to. Uh, and, and, and that's just important to understand that no system like that is perfect. Um, what we've moved to here in Nicaragua, because the system we have is much less convenient and more confusing than the American system, neither is perfect, but I'll grant you the American system is better. It's also important, just real quick note, we talked about this on the other episode, Nicaragua used to have that system. They intentionally stopped using it, right? So this is not a Nicaragua's backwards thing. This is not a they can't figure it out. All those things exist and they choose not to use it. Most people don't know what their numbers are, so it would be really tough to switch back to. But Google knows, if you look at Google Maps, all those addresses are there. It's just that the, the any mail delivery person wouldn't know how to use them. But if the government needed to find you by an address, they could do so. Right? If you said 432 6th Street Northeast, they would drive straight to your drive. They know exactly where that building is. It's just most people don't know. But Google Maps knows. So if you knew to open Google Maps and look, you could get there the same as, as anyone else. But since we don't use that and people don't want to use that and there are way better systems, there's no reason to use that. Right? There's no reason for Nicaragua to go back to the U.S. or Western style system. Um, because in all cases, the only thing that actually makes sense is using GPS coordinates. Because we've also done away with paper mail, because we've also done away with uh, fax machines and landlines and those kinds of things, we have the ability in basically any communications that we have to more or less instantly send GPS coordinates as to where we are or need to go. And that changes everything. So because everyone's on mechanisms like WhatsApp, it's not my favorite, but it's what we have, or Telegram or Signal, but almost no one uses those. You can at any moment say, I need a package delivered here, boom, and it's GPS coordinates come straight to you. When we go to use Ugo or Pedidos Ja, which is our food delivery, we simply say, this is where we are. You can shift the map a little bit and tweak it, like here's the front door of the house that I'm at or whatever, and it tells them exactly how to get to where you are, no question. There's no like, did I get the street name almost right? Is there a lane or a circle? Do the numbers go through? Do the, are the numbers continuous? Are they on one side of the road or the other? Like all that can be tough. It can be really straightforward or it can be really tough, but GPS coordinates are never hard. They are always the same. They are perfect. It is simply the spot on the, on the surface of the globe that you need to go. That is the system that makes sense. It is the only system that makes sense. And that is the system that we use here. So if you ever need to deliver something and have it delivered accurately, US or Nicaragua, you just have to give the GPS coordinates. And it's as easy here as saying my location and, it, and done. It sends it to them. They know exactly where to go. That's how we get our water, our food, any packages, anything. That's what you do. In the United States, most people will be like, I don't know how to receive that at a location. I don't know how to type that in. I don't have a spot to put that. And so you're stuck with the American style addresses because companies and, and people just don't know how to handle modern locations that way. But we've been doing this for 20 years now, right? Google Maps and, and MapQuest and all that stuff, they've been around and we've been working from coordinates for a long time and, and no one has to see them, right? It all happens in the background. We have all these mechanisms to make it really fluid. So we have that solved here. If you need packages, it is not a problem. It's just, you need to think about it in a, in, in a couple ways. One, you have to think about it as international, Take away the, the thought process of just gonna send things like you're, like you're back home, you're not back home, and it doesn't matter where you go, you, once you leave uh, a single country, mail is not really designed to move in between countries. And two, you have to move to a modern uh, address system rather than one of the legacy ones, right? Don't try to pick a legacy one, move to the modern one, and it's all solved. So, so at the end of the day, all that's the behind the scenes. Why is it all like it is here? What is it actually like? It's really good. You never get mail 
and it's the best thing ever. It's one of my favorite things about living in Nicaragua. There's zero mail. I never have to worry about going out and checking the mail. I never have to forward it to somewhere else. I never have to worry about being gone for a few weeks and it backing up or them collecting it at the office or them not knowing how to find me or moving between houses because that's something people do here all the time. They move between houses so you, you wouldn't know where to send it. You could go long periods of time without finding it. In the US, most people stay stationary most of the time because of their work, but here that's really common not to. So just so many problems get solved by not having mail delivery and it's so much better for the environment and there aren't these mail trucks driving all over the place getting in the way and people walking around the neighborhood delivering mail not that those are a big deal but it's all that stuff goes away it it doesn't generate unnecessary busy work so that people can just you know there's just more money in the economy by not hiding because essentially mail delivery is a welfare system that's one of the reasons they don't want to get rid of it in the united states it generates tons of jobs that seem important so it sounds like oh yeah no we, we've got all these jobs things are great really that's just honestly it's welfare it is and it's it's no individual person is is getting welfare through that but the mechanism is there just to generate unnecessary jobs to hide the unemployment numbers in the u.s right it's it makes everyone feel better that it's not straight up welfare but it is just government jobs that aren't needed to fill slots so that there's more jobs to hand out, which is a fine mechanism if that's the way you want to run your country or the government is creating the economy and, and defining how people want to work and you want that government oversight to all the jobs, fine. Um, there's a really high cost to that and here we don't have that. So it's just a much more efficient, a, a smaller, leaner government system here. Um, and, uh, but I think that that's, it's not just that um, it's about creating jobs. It's, it's a lot of bad things happen because of the need to create those jobs with all the trash being moved around and people paying for things. Um, and uh, uh, so once you're here, uh, having that ooh, need for all that go away is just fantastic. I have to go open the gate because someone just talked to me. Wasn't for me, but I was the only one standing outside, so someone else took care of it. And uh, so anyway, um, I think that you'll find in general the whole mail system and address system actually works pretty well here. You will be super frustrated when people give you Nicaragua style addresses and there's no way for you to deterministically know where to go. That is frustrating as can be. It's horrible. But anyone who seriously wants you to find their place is just going to give you a map location and it'll be 100% accurate and work perfectly every time. So if you intend to actually be found, it is the simplest thing ever. And if you want to hide yourself, yeah, there's a mechanism for being super annoying and we just got to encourage people not to do that. But in general, the mail thing is perfect. You don't have to worry about it. Um, and when you do need things delivered, it's not a problem at all. So I think you'll find it takes a change of thought, but it really is a good system. Thanks for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe. Uh, if you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee. Like I said, it comes directly to me. This is a long episode, so I'm doing it all twice. Uh, please share on social media. Tell your friends about the show. Um, hit those like buttons. Do all that stuff. It really does make a difference. And go watch an extra episode. Just hit it at the end. And thanks to Liesl, who's doing all the video editing. What an incredible difference that is making. Uh, it's so, so cool to have her as part of the team. And, of course, a shout-out to Valentina, who makes all the thumbnails. There are three of us now working on this show. It's amazing how quickly a show like this balloons into multiple people to be able to get it all done but it really does take a lot of work i will see all of you tomorrow by the way there can be audio during this portion like uh now that we've faded out uh remember to like and subscribe do all that stuff we got this thing on the screen you can go to one of these other videos that pop up they're fantastic thanks